Today's video is going to be in a casual format chit chat and whether I feel like Hermes for me has been a natural progression. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello, my name is Amy. I'm also the co-host of the Luxury Live Show with my partner Kat L. She did this video and uh, I said I would chime in myself as well. So uh, if you haven't seen hers, I will link it down below. For the most expensive bags that I had right after I was able to uh, for more expensive things and uh, was working as a professional, uh, I bought mostly coach bags. So I bought a number of coach bags for several years and then I decided to dip my toes into LV in 2008. And then the rest is history. <laughs> but if you follow my channel, you would know that I was still uh, very much into a lot of LV even at the beginning of my channel. And then of course I got into Chanel. I'm gonna link my collection playlist up here, but if you know my collection, it is mostly of a Chanel. And nowadays uh, I'm uh, very much very attracted to the aesthetic of Chanel. 2021 has been the year where I started diving into Hermes and um, decided that I wanted to get my first quota bag. Yes, it is a natural progression from me. However, I can also say that for a lot of people, it may not be a natural progression. If you look at Hermes, the brand itself, from everything that they offer, even if they do have sometimes a little bit more edgy items, such as, you know, I feel like their fashion jewelry are very edgy. But for the most part, when you look at their clothing, when you look at the bulk of their handbag designs, they're not the most fun and like trendy and whether everybody would feel like they want to dress or want to have that aesthetic, I would say it's probably a no. But for me, it is a natural progression. As someone who is a fashion lover, um, it's all about mixing and matching. It's all about mixing the high street. It's all about matching the pieces that fit your aesthetic and about um, incorporating things to dress up or dress down a certain look. But let's just put aside the fashion point of view or the styling point of view aside for a minute and just look at handbags in general because I know a lot of us in this luxury community, we uh, are mostly interested about handbags. I think we are more interested about handbags than about fashion. It kind of almost comes as a second afterthought. Um, so let's just concentrate on handbags because I know most of you watch videos, reviews and such just to learn about the handbags to see whether it is worth it or whether you would like it for yourself. When we look at handbags, not only do we look at the design, but we look at the construction, the quality, the heritage, and then of course the price and the wear and tear. Those are very much, um, you know, the the bulk of discussion of most review videos. I want to say prior to 2019, I never even thought about um, owning or wanting to own an Hermes bag because the sheer factor of the price, it was sort of in this unachievable or I don't want to go there type of category, type of price range. So regardless of their craftsmanship, of their history, of the fact that it was made from beginning to end by the same artisan, regardless of the whole heritage and the quality, I just didn't want to go there because of the price range. And to speak very frank for the most of us, who are just uh, working class and who are just saving to buy our luxury <laughs> to be able to afford something that we love. I think it makes a lot of sense for a lot of people to not want to go there just for financial reasons. This really just adds to the argument that Hermes is a natural progression for a lot of us. Uh, so speaking for myself, it is because even with Chanel, every time I added a Chanel bag, it was sort of like a mini heart attack because uh, not only do they cost a lot of money to begin with, but they also uh, keep on having very, very big price increases, especially the latest ones in uh, the year 2020. Honestly speaking, how many of you said to yourself that, oh, I just need this uh, classic flat plus a mini and then uh, maybe another bag and then I'll be good. Like I'll have bag piece. 
I'm sure a lot of you told yourself the same thing. And I don't know if I told myself that, but I always thought that, you know, I, I got to start somewhere, but I never really thought about the collection growing to what it is now. It always just was a progression. You know, I started with buying a pre-love jumbo flap, and then I decided that no, I just love mini bags. So I just started getting mini bags after mini bags and it is what it is now. So even with Chanel, it was a natural progression from LV. Granted, the prices back then, even just a few years ago, were not as crazy as they are now. Now they are just astronomical. Now the price of a classic flap from Chanel costs almost just as much as a quota bag. Your tastes change with your age. When you're in your early 20s compared to your late 30s, almost 40s, and maybe 50s and 60s, the handbags that you want to carry or even the look that you like to dress is completely different. Back then, I would only dress very serious if I had to go to work, but otherwise on the weekends and on my spare time and even at work, I tend to dress a little bit more out there to the point where one time uh, I remember the director of um, my company just started looking me up and down and wondering what kind of dress code is that? Why is she wearing super tight cargo pants, right? And they're shiny fabric. It was a, a pair of pants from Parasuko. Anyway, so uh, age really is a big, big factor because your tastes change with age. The influence that you get from other people, how you style yourself and your fashion sense also changes throughout the years. Um, obviously, everyone's going to have their own aesthetic. Your financial capability will change over time as well. We all want better quality things in our life when we can afford it. Another factor that a lot of people overlook is social media and marketing. And the thing is, it is even more relevant now than ever because with technological advances and everything being advertised online, whether you want it or not, because believe me, the fact that you're watching YouTube videos, that's your choice. And the fact that you're looking at certain reviews, that's your choice. But a lot of times it is not your choice that you end up seeing a lot of these things being advertised to you. Random advertising, not even necessarily stuff that you've looked at yourself, but things that might be related to uh, that pops up in your feed, that pops up in your search browser, that <laughs> pops up in the blog that you're reading. It's just in the banners, um, in your browse history on YouTube. It's everywhere uh, on Facebook, on Instagram. Advertising is everywhere and it's not just the influencers. The influencer is such a minimal part of it in a way. I get influence, we all get influence and that is the nature of people and it is such a natural thing. But yeah, just to reiterate that we are very, very much informational driven now and uh, there's just so much data and uh, information overload from the internet. So unless you don't have a cell phone and unless you don't have internet, you are bombarded with things that you keep seeing, things that you don't need that you keep seeing that makes you think and believe that you need. So yeah, basically, unless you don't watch news, you don't watch TV, you don't go on Netflix, you don't have any internet, you don't have cell phones, unless you don't have any of those, you are bound to be influenced one way or another because you may influence yourself just by looking up things uh, because those cookies, they remember. Having said that, I feel like even though it is a natural progression, it does not necessarily mean that you have to go there either. For me, it was definitely a personal choice. My buying experience at Elmez has been so different as well. Basically, aside from groceries, you can buy everything there. <laughs> like you can buy clothes, you can buy bags, you can buy homeware, you can buy soaps, you can buy perfumes, you can buy makeup now. When I started my journey, I was a little skeptical because I was always wondering why would anybody do this game, right? Why would anybody want to spend tens of thousands of dollars, however much the quota that you need to build to get offered these holy grail <laughs> quota bags? Uh, why would anybody want to do that? 
obviously it is an unspoken rule because nobody really knows honestly what you need to do to do but you just kind of trial and error and i am still doing trial and error because i don't have anything to show for it but you just don't know until you try it so i just told myself that i just gotta start somewhere right i just gotta just um really buy what i love which is what I always try to do it doesn't always work out but you know really try your best to buy what you love then it doesn't become this game it just becomes shopping uh, which I already love doing I just love shopping right uh, who doesn't and the more I explore all these different categories of things that I bring home the more you really or at least I truly fell in love with the brand because the experience and the attention that my sale assistant gives me versus all my other sales assistants from other brands gave me is just unmatched so that's one one thing that i already really appreciate customer service um, perhaps it has something to do with their appointment system uh, also since the pandemic everything is just a lot more strict so maybe that could be the reason but it still is very different from how i've experienced before um, second of all the quality of their items it's just a match in terms of, you know, I, I never really have any issues with any of the items that I own and everything that I bring home, I just, you know, I just unbox and I love, you know, I just feel the quality. So even though I did have a bit of a doubt at first and wondering whether I'm even ready to do this game, to play this game and to spend such a large amount of money to not even know whether I would in the end get offered the holy grail wish list item that I think I want, it doesn't matter anymore because it became my natural progression. I just now am actually looking forward to going into the store because I just want to explore more and more things until they surprise me one day with, you know, <laughs> my wish list item. Um, which would be cherry on top. So you kind of have to even shift your mindset a bit. Uh, even though you wouldn't know at first, you wouldn't really know that it is part of your natural progression. You just kind of realize over time and as you get into it more. So anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Let me know how your luxury buying journey has been. If you're new to my channel and you love this video or if you like my other videos, then please do consider subscribing. I would love to have you back. I'll talk to you guys again very soon. Bye.